Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Soap Opera Tools Rocket Shop. We are gonna start doing something very interesting today. Um, remember we told you about our speaker tanks, they're pretty much done now, but we have one more important step left. It was part of our uh, the, the uh, technology that we set out to do, in which case where we deformation harden our propellant tanks. It's basically a way to make stronger, lighter tanks and uh, the process is we're going to fill them up with water and then we're going to increase the water pressure uh, so that we reach a, a pressure that's good for flight and as a result of that the uh, the tank will, will expand a little bit. To make sure we're all on the same page let's take a few seconds to go through how we got to this point in the first place. So this is the speaker rocket. That's you, and these are its propellant tanks that will feed our BPM-100 engine with ethanol and liquid oxygen at a combined mass flow of around 50 liters per second. At least for now, the Spica-1 is designed as a pressure-fed rocket with a dynamic pressure regulation system. With the BPM-100 engine combustion chamber operating at around 15 bar, it means the propellant tanks need to be lightweight yet strong enough to be pressurized to over 20 bar in order for the engine to operate at its designed pressure. To begin building these high pressure tanks in house, we chose a 3mm thick 304L stainless steel plate and rolled it into a cylinder. This is where the fun began trying to make long seam welds of extremely fine, repeatable quality. This is the most critical weld on the entire airframe, and for that we designed and built our own semi-automatic long seam welder which, through trial and error and some destructive testing, got us long seam welds that were close to or even stronger than the base material. Having mastered these long seam welds, we also made an enormous DIY plasma cutting table that is big enough to cut any part for the speaker rocket on it. And once we got the bulkheads for the tanks delivered, we taught our plasma cutter to cut piping holes in a curved path along three axes and proceeded welding the propellant and pressure end connections to the bulkheads, as well as the interconnecting side skirts. At the same time in the process, our plasma cutter got busy cutting all the anti-slosh baffles that prevent the heavy propellants inside the tanks transferring unwanted momentum of the fluids into the tank walls. This effect can easily make any rocket unstable in flight and end up in a rapid unscheduled disassembly. So once we joined the first finished bulkhead with the cylindrical section of the tank, we manually welded the baffles to the inner tank walls to prevent any sloshing in flight. And that seemed to make our tanks a little too heavy for our circumferential welder, which initially wasn't designed for such heavy loads. So this made us upgrade our long seam welder to act as an automated circumferential welder as well. Which means it not only can handle our full tanks now, but should also produce circumferential welds of much higher quality. So with that, it's about time we finally test it. So just to give you an idea of what's, uh, what's going to happen, I just brought some of the uh, old uh, pre-experiments we did for the Nexo 2 um, tank set. So what I have here is basically the size of a Nexo 2 tank. And what you're going to have to, uh, to imagine is that we, once the water pressure inside this sort of expands this tank a bit like a balloon, the, uh, it also becomes much stronger. These two tanks we have here, at some point, they started out the same diameter. Of course, this tank we have here, that one was an experiment where we, uh, where we tested this deformation hardening concept all the way up to destruction. Of course, we're not going to do that with our speaker tanks. We're just going to expand them a little bit so they hold a, a pressure of, uh, I guess, 30 bars or more. We are just about ready to take the first tank and roll it outside into our uh, test container, the one we actually do uh, static engine tests in, just to make sure that we have this thing in a safe environment when we are going to deformation harder. So we are going to put something more uh, above 30 bars uh, of uh, pressure on this one, completely filled up with water so we don't have any risk, uh, at least not to personnel, which will be standing safely outside the test container when we pressurize it. Of course, we hope that we've done our, uh, our handiwork properly. So first of all, it should be leaking. And secondly, we should have made our weldings well enough so that we don't risk uh, the tank rupturing. So our stainless steel tank here is uh, what we're basically betting the entire uh, speaker mission on. Stainless steel, and uh, it is some of the material is so thin that when we pressurize it to, uh, to the pressure we're going the propellant pressure we're gonna need to fly plus a safety factor, we can't uh, expect anything else 
but the uh, metal of the tank expanding slightly as a, as a sort of a balloon, as inflating a balloon. Um, if we want strong and light tanks, we really don't have a choice. Because we could make a stainless steel tank that wouldn't inflate at all um, and fly with that. The problem is just the tank would, I don't know, probably be twice as heavy. But we are using this uh, very special um, characteristic of stainless steel that we expanded a little bit and with a bit of luck we uh, our tanks here will just uh, I don't know volume will probably increase from about 1200 liters to maybe 1300 liters just for the deformation hardening without this thing becoming a gram heavier so this is uh, this is the bigot We did it. It's actually working. The first speaker tank is now pretty much done. It's leak tested and it's deformation hardened. Um, the deformation hardening, I mean, you might be able to see it from where you are. If you follow the curvature of the tank, you'll find that it has a certain diameter here and then it expands for a long section, it keeps a, a, a bigger diameter and then it, it sort of uh, contracts again and goes back to the original diameter of this, uh, the tank here before we deformation hardened it. Um, a couple of things. Uh, first part of the good news is it didn't have any leaks, not even a single leak. So that part worked out fine. I guess our welding is, uh, is coming up to, to quality now. And second part of it is, of course, it didn't rupture. That's also a good, uh, pretty good piece of news. And then thirdly, it didn't, uh, it didn't um, deformation harden, or at least when deformation hardened to more than 30 bars, it actually didn't expand that much in diameter. You've seen the uh, small tanks we tested uh, to destruction, and they, I mean, they grew about 30, 40% in diameter before they ruptured. This one here has come quite a, a, a bit up. It has the uh, propellant pressure we need plus a safety factor. So, it didn't expand as much as uh, as the small tank. So we have a um, we have a, th a theory as to why that didn't happen because we rolled these plates uh, for the cylindrical part. We rolled them ourselves, and what might actually have happened was that during the rolling process, it actually deformation hardened uh, the the plate uh, and the cylinder a little bit uh, before we even started pressurizing it. So. It didn't take on much more than about 10 centimeters in diameter, so um, it's, it, it's not going so uh, sort of Michelin shaped as we thought it might have gone. So right here, right now, we're just happy this works. So um, first tank is done and uh, I mean, we cheated a little bit. It, uh, the process actually went quicker than we thought. So we accidentally, accidentally deformation hardened, pressurized and plate tested the second tank. Same story, they reach pretty much the same diameter, no leaks on tank number two either. So uh, this last part of the process went really, really fast. So what's left here, I mean, you can see the opening here that fits properly with the, uh, with the intertank section we have ready. And what we need from this one more or less now, is just uh, clean it up and give it a nice white coat of uh, paint. Maybe a fancy stick too as well. As for our next step here, uh, the tank, propellant tank section is pretty much done, so we can't really move on further with that one. So the next step we, uh, we have opted to look for now is that we've been, uh, we've been putting some effort, some time and some attention into how to build the BPM100 engine. As mentioned, our, uh, our last, latest static engine test was we validated the swirl injector concept 
uh, prove that it works well enough, and it actually works really well, then we're going to use it on the, uh, on the BPM100 engine. So we've been putting some time into figuring out how to uh, do the inner liner, the outer liner, the construction, some of the curved sections that we're going to do uh, some internal reinforcements, and then uh, how to uh, build one of these uh, prototype engines as uh, quickly as possible so that we can, uh, we can light up a really big fire at some point, inside the engine, of course. So rocket fans, um, this is not really our tanks. This is uh, your tanks too, because you fans and supporters made it possible for us to get to this point. This, these are, I think, without a doubt, the biggest uh, amateur propellant tanks ever made. They passed their leak test, they passed their pressure test. Now all we gotta do is uh, assemble it and then we have the uh, very, very important part of this uh, giant speaker rocket. So thanks a bunch. I mean, without you, this wouldn't be possible. And with your continued effort, we, uh, we hope to take this one all the way to the finish line. That is all for now. So as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.